Prime Minister visits schools as new term opens under strict protocols. Celebrating the success of Darren Sami and the St. Lucia Zooks. Prime Minister lauded for chairmanship of the Caribbean Development and Cooperation Committee and new Taiwanese ambassador gets acquainted with local projects. Let's flip the pages on some of the events in the Prime Minister's weekly diary. Knowing that the first day of the new school term amidst the COVID-19 pandemic would be an anxious one for students and teachers, Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chastney sent a message of calm while also visiting some schools on the island. Redman has focused on ensuring safe and healthy schools with specific protocols in place at all educational facilities. On Monday, the Prime Minister spent the morning going from class to class at the National Sports Academy and the Gross Bay Primary School to get feedback from students and teachers on the reopening of school and to reassure them of the government's commitment to keep them safe amidst the COVID-19 pandemic this academic year. Last year, more than 31 million people visited the Caribbean. Coronavirus has deprived the region of tens of billions of dollars, shutting down airports and cruise ship docks and closing restaurants and shops. But well, one place where the effect of the pandemic has been devastating is St Lucia. Two-thirds of the economy is reliant on tourism. Let's speak to the Prime Minister of St Lucia, Alan Chastenay, who joins us live from... Prime Minister Chastenay joined the BBC World News to speak on how St Lucia has managed the pandemic to date and what holidaymakers can expect in the phased reopening. The Prime Minister continued to call on airlines and countries to move the meter forward on pre-testing to help build consumer confidence and to boost tourism. You said the number, there's 30 million people traveling to the Caribbean on an annual basis, and that's just the Caribbean. Um, I think if, if we're to see a return globally to, to travel, um, that we need to do what happened after 9-11. Imagine after 9-11 if, in fact, we did not have the security protocols in place. I don't think it would have recovered as quickly. And I think the same thing applies here. Economically, for both sides of the pond, both in the UK as well as in the Caribbean, there's a significant benefit if we can now bring people's confidence back to traveling. And that's certainly going to stimulate. This week, Prime Minister Chastney handed over chairmanship of the Caribbean Development and Cooperation Committee to Honorable Camilo Gonzalez, Minister of Finance, Economic Planning, Sustainable Development and Information Technology of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The incoming chairman and the committee lauded Prime Minister Chastney for his leadership. Prime Minister Chastney has been a titan in these battles um, to have the voice of the Caribbean heard and the specificities of the Caribbean uh, properly understood as we all embark on a developmental journey that is unique uh, anywhere in the world, uh, given our size, given our openness, given our debt burden, uh, given our vulnerabilities. And, and, and Prime Minister Chastney has been an eloquent advocate uh, for the region and has certainly advanced uh, the cause of Caribbean development during his two years at the helm of the CDCC. ECLAC is, has been an excellent advocacy body. It's been an excellent body for uh, statistical compilation and analysis. And now it is working very hard with us on solutions, uh, not only internally, but as we face the world um, in creating solutions uh, crafted by and for the people of this region. So I hope that we can advance uh, your work, Prime Minister Chastney, advance the work of ECLAC and advance the ideas of the region so that we can produce practical, workable, pragmatic solutions that are nonetheless uh, revolutionary and transformative on their impact on the region. So um, thank you very much. And I uh, hope to do half as good a job as you have done, sir, during your tenure. Thank you very much. On Thursday, Prime Minister Chastney joined members of his constituency to watch the St. Lucia Zooks play in the finals of the 2020 CPL T20 tournament. It was a morning of emotional ups and downs as St. Lucians tuned in to watch the Zooks in their first final since the tournament began. Although the Zooks did not win the tournament, the Prime Minister said that all St. Lucians should be proud of Captain Darren Sami and the team, calling them diligent ambassadors who showed us that we can achieve what may seem impossible when we work together, remain positive and work hard. 
Later on Thursday, the Prime Minister joined Invest in Lucia for the agency's latest venture towards its goal of securing 600 new landowners for the financial year. The Bosha land development sits on 11 acres of flat land parceled into 59 residential and commercial lots. Prime Minister Shastley concluded the opening ceremony with brief remarks expressing his gratitude to Invest St. Lucia and excitement about the new opportunities now available to residents of Miku South and environs. Increasing St. Lucia's housing stock is a priority of the government of St. Lucia and counting this latest addition as a fourth land development ready to provide private and commercial ownership opportunities for citizens. To apply for land ownership from any of Invest St. Lucia's developments, visit investstlucia.com. Also this week, Prime Minister Shastney took time to show new Taiwan ambassador, His Excellency Peter Shen, some of the projects funded with the aid of the Taiwanese government, including the new wing of the St. Jude Hospital. The Ambassador, the Prime Minister and Minister for Economic Development Honorable Guy Joseph toured the new facility currently under construction and also visited sites earmarked for development in the south of the island. As the week came to a close, on Friday, discussion centered on regional travel and an update on testing requirements for the travel bubble of Caribbean countries. The Caribbean Public Health Agency, CAFA, made a presentation with recommendations to heads of government and health teams from around the region. That's it for your update on the Prime Minister's Week. Join us every week for the Prime Minister's Weekly Diary. Reporting for the Office of the Prime Minister, I am Nicole MacDonald.